So I decided to try the Sculptober challenge this year. I believe it was started by Folygon. I saw it on Twitter. And uh, you can just search the Sculptober hashtag to find the prompt list if you'd like to join also. The prompt for day one is Chomp. And I'm doing this as a way to get better at sculpting. I've been wanting to get better, but since I haven't put much time into it, I'm not very good yet. So you can watch me get better as I post these videos. I already have a drawing tablet. I'll say what kind in the description. But I know you don't need one to be good at sculpting. Plenty of people out there sculpt with just a mess. I don't know if I'll post a video for each sculpt. So if you want to see how I do, follow me on Instagram. All right, let's get started. So right here, I'm loading in my reference image that I drew right before. Then I start with a plane and collapse those down into one point and start using that with the skin modifier to lay out the basic shape of the body. And with this, you can press Control A to change the scale, or if you press the N button, the side panel pops out. You can change those two values right there. This takes a lot of trial and error to get the right topology. Sometimes if the scale is weird or the points are too close together, um, geometry will start like clipping into each other. So you really have to mess with it quite a bit. So now I add in a cube, the subdivision surface modifier on top to get the basic head shape. And here I'm going back to the skin modifier and trying to make it so that the body isn't clipping through the head too much. It's pretty cartoony. So the arms are pretty messed up. Uh, they have like two elbows, basically. Skin modifier makes it uh, a lot easier to make hands too. So, cause you can pretty much just extrude those points to make the fingers. All right, so then I am fixing little parts that I notice are clipping through each other and turning the subdivision surface modifier up for the head and the body and applying those. I did duplicate those first before I applied them just in case I had to go back. So now I'm here in sculpting mode and I'm just trying to lay out some basic shapes, some big shapes basically. So like, so I'm starting with the mouth and I like to use the clay strips tool. If you hold control with that, instead of building up it, it takes away. So I was doing that to get the mouth hole. And then I'm just going around and trying to get the lips close to the way they look in the picture and smoothing a little while I go with the shift key, shift and left click. I tried using the flatten tool a little for parts of it, but I wasn't really enjoying it. So I soon go back to the clay strips tool, messing around with the snake hook too, to get some, uh, to deform the head a little. So I tried using the snake hook to make some teeth and then I tried layer to make teeth. And I eventually decided that I was just going to make them a separate mesh with a cube. So I'm, I'm making it pretty simple right here. It's basically just a cube with one edge loop laying out the basic uh, tooth shape right here. I'm just trying to get it so it's not clipping through the head. So right here, I'm going in and trying to decide where I want the, the teeth to be separated. But as you can see in the drawing, they're not actually big separate pieces. So I didn't make them separate meshes. I'm just doing grooves in them. This took me a while to get right because I was trying to give each of them like a distinct shape. So I was basically cutting away with the clay strips tool and then trying to smooth to get kind of like a round shape so they weren't as like brick-like. I wanted them to be kind of rounded. So then I go back into the head and start adjusting the lip shape to make the lips come down a little so they cover the teeth a little more. And then I'm going over and smoothing the lips out, trying to make them a little cleaner. Basically, the, the fatter parts of the lip, I was trying to make a little more spherical, if that makes any sense. So they kind of have like a, a point where they're like the thickest. So then I'm going through with the crease tool and trying to refine the edges a little. And I keep going back and forth and smoothing with, and then going back to the crease tool. So now I'm starting with the eyebrows basically just again using the clay strips tool to build up and trying to make these parts look like they're actually creasing together and wrinkling slightly which took me a little while trying to build up that edge right there to make it once again look kind of spherical this one is very asymmetrical so i had to keep switching to the front view to make sure that the eyebrows actually looked correct 
And again, I'm using my reference photo, which is nice to have. You don't need one, obviously, but I'm much more comfortable drawing. So I felt like it was a good place to start. As you can see, I didn't make the eye yet. I just left a hole for it. And later I'm going to add a sphere in there. So I'm just cleaning up the eye area right there and trying to make sure that the brow right there is, uh, is going back far enough. So I'm pretty much just using it to be a picture from the front, but I still want it to look okay from all angles. I want it to make sense. So then here I'm just giving the, uh, like the eye cavity a little shape. Right here I'm going through the clay strips tool and kind of making the, the side of the head, like where the cheekbone would be, a little more angular. I was kind of getting the hang of uh, making it crease right there. So you can see it's starting to look a little more sharp. I feel like this point right here was kind of a turning point where I was understanding how to make things look a little more clean and geometric. Because like I said in the beginning, I'm not very good at sculpting yet. I've done some in real life, but I haven't done this a whole lot digitally. So I'm still learning. There were definitely a few points during this where I was starting to get a little more comfortable with my technique. I know you're supposed to start with big shapes and slowly add more small details in there. And so I feel like that helped me a lot, helped me achieve the, the shape that I was going for. So right here, I'm going through with the grab brush and just pushing things around very slightly just to, uh, to make it a little closer to my reference image. Okay, so I am adjusting the body now. And I had to remesh it because the skin modifier was kind of breaking it a little. So I think if you do Shift R when you're in this mode, um, it gives you a, a remesh grid. It has like a little overlay. It makes it a little easier to understand how fine it is. So I did that and then I went through and I smoothed. And right here, I was having a little trouble getting the feet to look correct. As And when you look at my final image, you can see that the feet are still a little messy. Uh, I wasn't trying to make it perfect. I am I know things aren't going to be perfect. So I was just trying to get it close and then move on, basically, knowing that the more I do this, the better I'll get. I don't want to get hung up too much. I was already spending quite a lot of time on this sculpt. So I'm basically using the regular brush, whatever it's called, the draw brush. And uh, I found that was a little more cleaner, trying to make the feet wide than the clay strips. And then I'm going through with the grab brush and trying to push things, trying to make the ankles a little thinner, like in my drawing right there. And then I'm going through and smoothing a little bit and trying to make things a little more clean. And occasionally when I was using the clay strips tool, I would look at the other side of the foot and it would be all broken. So be careful with that when you're trying to sculpt on something that's very thin. Right here, I'm just using the clay strips tool to build up what looks like a waistband on the pants, making the butt a little bigger right here and making the belly stick out just a tiny bit. And I think I went a little overboard, so I made it a little smaller. Right here, the arm was looking a little strange, so I was trying to go through with the draw brush, the regular brush, and adjust it and make it not have that weird bump on there. And then I'm adding like part of a spine and some shoulder blades going through to the hands and just smoothing those out so they don't have any weird artifacts, basically, and trying to sculpt the front of the hand and the back of the hand just so you can tell which side is supposed to be the front, basically. But I didn't spend too much time on this. I knew it wasn't going to be a big focus, so I didn't want to pour too much time in there. The main focus is on the head. And then I'm sculpting in a belly button right here. Basically just a hole with a little clay strip on the outside. And then I'm putting the eye in right here and just squashing it down. So it's not perfectly spherical. It is squashed a little, but I'm not trying to animate this, so it's not too problematic. Right here, I ended up going with um, just a plane that has a solidify, and then I added a bevel and a subdivision surface. So it is um, kind of cubey, but with when you adjust the bevel, it makes it so 
it's not completely round with the uh, subdivision surface on there. You can kind of decide how sharp you want the edges to be with that. And here I'm dropping in a plane, extruding it upward and then beveling the corner to make a simple backdrop. And I forgot that I didn't take a bite out, so I'm going through actually and just using a Boolean for this. And it's basically just a plane um, sliced into four. So there are four separate faces and extrude those outward and make sure that they're not connected to each other. So then when I solidify and add the subdivision surface, like you can see on the side, they kind of make um, those circular edges. Then I just use a simple deform right here to make it curved slightly and start manually curving a little also just to adjust the shape a little more. I'm much more comfortable modeling like poly modeling and uh, doing like having like a procedural workflow with modifiers. You know that if you watch my other videos. So this part was actually pretty easy and I was surprised when it worked out well because I know Booleans can be kind of tricky and uh, cause problems, but this worked no problem. Just had to make sure that the solidify was thick enough so that it went all the way through. And here I'm just setting up some basic lights. I think I stuck with like a three point lighting here where there's a big soft white light on the top and then a warm and a cool on the side. The cool is kind of being used like a rim light. And right now I'm in Eevee, but eventually I do switch over to cycles. And I do have an HDRI, but I think in my final render, I actually turned that down all the way. So it's it's just my set and those three lights. And so here I am trying to unwrap a few objects because I'm preparing to texture paint. I was having trouble UV unwrapping the head and getting clean results because uh, faces were kind of overlapping. It's marking a few seams. Eventually I tried out um, using vertex color instead of UV unwrapping. I found that to be a lot more easy, but the resolution is a little lower and I decided I would just settle for that instead um, and not worry about UV unwrapping. I don't have too much experience UV unwrapping or texture painting at all. I think this was like one of the first times I tried texture painting. So I am comfortable with shaders, the shader editor. So I just plugged the vertex color directly into the color on the uh, principal BSDF shader and just started going for it. So right here, I was just drawing the color in. Um, and partway through, actually, I looked up if you could just uh, fill everything with one color. And I did find an answer if you do Shift K, if you press Shift K, it will uh, fill everything with the color that you have selected currently. So I end up using that later. So here I'm just coloring the lips in, trying to figure out where they should stop. Decide I'm just going to fill the whole mouth in. And I'm trying to figure out what kind of color I want for the inside, making sure that the, they contrast enough. So I'll go for this kind of a reddish pink color. And here I decide to touch the face up very slightly with some darker color, trying to be uh, gentle with it so that none of the edges are too dark, kind of going for like an airbrushed look and just accentuating some of the creases and a little under the cheeks, things like that. Just going through here and uh, making the belly button a little more prominent and then filling in the pants color. And I decided to just use the same color for the pants that I was using for the lips and not going overboard, basically just filling it in with one color, not drawing too much. Once again, plugging the vertex color into the eye, realizing that it wasn't going to work out that well because the resolution was too low. So I actually do UV unwrap this since it's a uh, default sphere, a UV sphere. It's already basically unwrapped, so it's pretty clean. I was able to just draw that on pretty quickly and easily. So right here, I put a less than node right after the uh, vertex color node, basically saying, um, you know, anything that has color, anything that has a value, basically separate it. And I'm trying to use that as a mask so that I can make the bite mark a different color. And then I'm just adding a separate color and using that uh, less than as a mask for the roughness and the bump map so that the bite mark can have a, you know, different color and roughness and all that than everything else. 
decided to go with a slight noise texture, kind of subtle bump overall, just to give it some kind of texture. Right here, I just copy that um, noise texture for the bump. And right here, I'm using some ambient occlusion to make the creases a little more prominent again. Just fiddling with it until I get a decent result. Then adjusting the eyebrows and just putting a, a little bump and turning the roughness up for those. So for the teeth here, I want them really shiny, but I decide to jump in and mess with some lighting first. So now I'm in cycles over here. I'm just adjusting the set background and making sure the lights look okay. So I'm back shading the teeth and I'm trying to use the ambient occlusion mode. I'm going to use this as a mask to make it so the grooves in the teeth have some, uh, some dirt on it. And I am using a noise texture for the dirty parts. So here I am. I just used a noise texture and then plugged another noise texture in to the location of the previous one so that they're distorting each other. And I make that this kind of a yellowy color. And I'm just, you know, messing around, seeing if... I want to add any final touches or anything like that. But this is pretty much the final result. I did go through right here and change the roughness. I just use a linear gradient to make the pants not as rough as the body. The final result, you can't tell very much. So I definitely didn't have to do this. I think I was just getting kind of finicky. All right, so I start rendering it out now with cycles. And I'm using a CPU for this. My GPU is not very good. Then I decide to do a viewport render of a clay shader. And I also add a copy rotation constraint to the set so that it copies the rotation of the camera, but only the Z. So basically, whenever the camera rotates, the set rotates with it. And I'm preparing a little turnaround animation right here. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching my first sculpting video. If I put these up more frequently, I'll try to make them a little shorter. And I'll see you next time.